Good morning, and thank you for being here with me today. Won't you please become focused with me as we come together before our Father, and we ask that he allows me to open my mouth and he bring utterance, that he lets the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in his sight, that he sends down fresh manna from heaven, designed with us in mind, designed to stir up that gift of thios within us and keep us moving, up the highway towards our highest good. And for that this morning, Father, we are grateful. We are grateful this morning. Today is the third Sunday of November. The apostle is Jude of Thaddeus. The idea is renunciation and elimination. The color is russet and the faculty of the body is the abdominal region. Today, we are focusing on eliminating those things that keep us from being more like Christ. And I want you to just be reflective and I want you to be grateful and thankful as we approach this season of Thanksgiving. I want you to know just how blessed you are. I declare that if you praise God, if you Think just for a moment, you'll have cause to thank. Yes, yes, you will. We must learn to be grateful for the blessings of the Lord. If you can't tell whether your glass is half empty or half full, you don't need another glass. You need better eyesight. You need a new pattern of thinking. You need a new way of assessing. You have to learn to have a more thankful heart as you look at the landscape of your life. Do you see opportunities, possibilities, and blessings? Or do you focus instead on the less pleasant scenario? Do you spend more time counting your blessings or counting your misfortunes? See, the way you choose to view the scenery around you will have a profound impact on the quality, the tone, and the direction of your life. The more you focus on beauty that surrounds you, the more beautiful your own life will become. I want you to practice some declarations, a formal declaration today. I want you to just hear this and remember to declare blessings on your own life. I declare God's blessings over my life. I declare God's healing power over my life. I declare God's wisdom over my life. I declare God's favor over my life. Not a trickle, not a stream, but a flood. Yes, Lord. I declare my God is overwhelming me with his goodness and amazing me with his favor. That's my declaration. I encourage you to have a similar declaration. Declare those things in your life. This is our month of elimination and renunciation. Elimination, according to Webster's definition, is to cast out or get rid of, to remove or eradicate, to set aside as unimportant, to ignore, to cause, to disappear. So all of those things that are holding you down and holding you back, let them go. Release them. Cast them out. Get rid of them. Remove them. Set them aside as unimportant. Don't let them have power in your life. I want you to ignore them, to cause them to disappear. I want you to use a formal declaration. That's what renunciation is. It's to refuse by formal declaration. This far and no further. To refuse to follow, obey, or recognize any further. I declare the blessings of the Lord in my favor. Right? Formal declaration. This is our affirmation for this month. Please listen and confirm together. The Christ faculty of elimination and renunciation are quickened in me. 
The renunciation power of God moves in me and through me, and it eliminates all things that are not like God. I am one with this power, for I am one with God. Only good shall remain with me. I am blessed. I am blessed. And you know that I am blessed. And so it is. Claim your blessings. When you people around you know you blessed, you have to know you blessed. Lay aside those things that no longer serve you well. Yet once more. And why is it yet once more? Because as we proceed through our lives and our activities, some things that served us well last year no longer serve us well this year. And you have to recognize that and let it go. You have to release it to its highest good. You have to thank it for being present in your for being present in your experience because apparently you called it to your experiences for a reason. My hope is that you learned your lesson and you got your blessing and now you can release it to its highest good because it has served you well, but it no longer serves you anymore this far and no further you can let it go now you can let it go let it go in hebrews the 12th chapter in the first and second verses i want you to take some time and read through that it's really good but for today let's start with this it says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us let us run with patience the race that is set before us let us run with patience doesn't that sound like an oxymoron how you gonna run with patience let me help you with this lay aside every weight not just those things that you think are light enough for you to handle but lay aside every weight how many of you know that when you weigh down with negative scenarios you are more you succumb more easily to sin you know it's just like your immune system when your immune system is down you're more susceptible to colds and flus and things of that nature well when your spirituality is weighed down, you're more susceptible to succumb to sin. But I want you to lay those things aside so that you give God every weight, not just the ones you have recognized that are too heavy, but those things that you think even you could handle. Lay aside all those things that weigh you down, cast it on the God within you, then you are free to move forward. And the sin which so easily besets you. And then run, run. When you say run, does it ignite some excitement in you? You know, we just finished with zeal and enthusiasm. When you run, are you running with enthusiasm then? So I want you to run for God with enthusiasm, but be patient. Be patient and wait on God in this race that is set before you. Be patient and wait for God. I want you to go with me now in light of time down to the 25th verse. And it reads, See that ye refuse him not that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of those things that so heavily beset you. So, when Jesus was in the physical body and he spake to your physical person, Sometimes that physical nature of you is just not listening. 
sometimes you just don't hear. And then when God speaks to your spirit, sometimes you're not receptive. But God being the God who he is, he's not giving up. He says, yet once more, yet, yet once more, I shake the earth. I'm going to shake that physical man up. And not just the earth. I'm going to shake with my voice from heaven. That spiritual man. See, sometimes that gift needs to be stirred up in you. God's spirit needs to be stirred up. Sometimes you need a good shaking to bring you out of your fog and into the reality of the wonderful Lord that we serve. The wonderful God who is sovereign, sovereign. So sovereign Lord over all things and is in control and only wants for you good and very good. Sometimes you have to shake up that spirit. You have to hear from the Lord on high. So I want to encourage you as, as we are now right before our Thanksgiving, I want you to be reflective and I want you to become grateful and thankful for the many blessings that you have. I want you, no matter what your circumstance is, to acknowledge that God be God all by himself, that God is in control and that God only wants what is good and very good for you and that you are still blessed no matter what your circumstance is because it could have been worse. Yes, it could have been much worse than it is. So tell the Lord, thank you for things being as well as it is. I'm wishing each and every one of you a blessed, bountiful, happy Thanksgiving. Amen. My prayer for you is that you remain Christ-centered and you continue to be blessed.